It's Matt Makoviak, Republican strategist. Uh, Matt, good morning. How are you today? I'm doing great. Good morning, Chad. How are you? Oh, doing great. So we got you on light. We're we're having some issues up here, and uh, we we no we problem. yeah we, limited breaks is what we're in right now. Uh, Matt, it's uh let's see here at about uh, noon our time is when the impeachment hearings uh get going in Washington D.C. I, I've got a poll question up on our website at kfyo.com. How interested are you in the impeachment trial? Because I, I just, it's hard for me to believe that most Americans uh, really care and are in that invested in these impeachment hearings. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I generally agree. I think that, um, you know, for, for news junkies, there's a lot of interest, but for normal people, they're not sitting around during the business day, you know, watching this stuff. Yeah. Look, I, I expect this thing is actually going to be kind of short. Uh, you know, the key question is going to be once uh, both sides have made opening arguments, uh, evidence has been presented and senators have asked questions, which could take us to the you know, middle of next week, what will happen when there's a motion to call witnesses? Uh, will you have four Republicans join with all the Democrats to call, uh, in particular, former National Security Advisor John Bolton? I mean, that to me is the only question right now on the impeachment trial. And of course, if that happens, uh, Bolton's testimony would, I think, be a, a key moment. Um, you know, does he basically back up Trump's side of things? Does he go after Mulvaney? Does he uh, introduce new facts? Um, you know, we don't know. We simply do not know. But I don't know. I, I still sort of feel like they're not going to call Bolton. Or if they do, that, that there may be some type of executive privilege claim that ends up preventing him from, from testifying in short order. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how long it goes. Look, there, there is motivation to get it done, despite Democrats holding press conferences, wanting to call everyone, on, you know, in the Western Hemisphere to testify. Number one, they've got uh, what is it? Four U.S. senators still running for president who want to be in Iowa, New Hampshire. Uh, two of whom have a pretty good shot of being the nominee in Bernie Sanders and, and Elizabeth Warren. Um, second, you have this awkward thing of the president of the United States scheduled to give the State of the Union on February 4th, the day after Iowa, which is what I think two two weeks from yesterday. Um, he's not. I, I don't think he's going to give the State of the Union if the impeachment trial is still going. I think they'll right. postpone it. But, um, you know, you can't just say, okay, we're going to do it uh, the next day or the day after. I mean, there are security, uh, you know, aspects to that. There's scheduling. You know, the president doesn't just have an open schedule. Um, so, you know, that, that, that's difficult to, to arrange. So, I, I don't know. It still kind of feels to me like this thing may be over, Chad, by, by the State of the Union. It really, it really might. I don't think uh, – I think there are, there are some under-the-surface motivations to move more quickly than not. This whole thing sort of feels like professional wrestling. You know, everyone's pretending to fight, but they're not really <laughs> fighting. Uh, so talk to us about the, the, the rules. Uh, that's the battle right now, right, over the rules. And then do how do witnesses get called if there are going to be anyone? Is that decided under the rules? or Because you had mentioned earlier you, you need, what, four Republicans to join with Democrats in order to call a witness? How, how does that all work? Yeah, and we're all going to kind of be learning throughout the process here um, because impeachment is different. Um, and we'll, we'll know here uh, in about you know, two or three hours what the final rules package is that actually passes the Senate as part of impeachment. Um, but ba basically there's a 51-vote threshold to call any witness. So, you know, Hunter Biden, if there are 51 people that want to call Hunter Biden, and of course there's 53 Republicans, then they can call Hunter Biden, or they can call John Brennan, or they can call Joe Biden. <laughs> I don't think they're going to call Joe Biden. But, um, you know, Hunter Biden I think is possible, particularly if they end up voting to, to, um, to, to call, to call uh, Bolton. I think there will be, uh, as Ted Cruz calls it, witness reciprocity uh, yeah. in that sense. Um, but, yeah, I mean, in terms of the rules, I think there's basically two things that matter. One is this issue of witnesses, which they're not even going to consider until uh, after the first phase is over, after both sides have presented their arguments, which I think both sides have 24 hours, and it sounds like they're going to do it in two 12-hour shifts uh, starting, I think, Wednesday. So they may, go, they may literally go from 1 p.m. to 1 a.m. or perhaps 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. We'll see over two days, and, of course, Democrats are howling about that. Um, so once both sides present, then uh, senators have a chance to ask questions. I believe there's 16 hours of questions scheduled. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if they they separate that over two days. So 
you know, two days, two days, two days, that's six days, six days starting uh, today. That takes you, you know, to Saturday or perhaps Monday. So I think you're, you're going to have a decision and a vote on witnesses as, as, as soon as, you know, perhaps Monday. Um, and, but the other thing to keep in mind, Chad, is that there is, um, there is a built-in, built into the rules package, there is a provision that allows McConnell to bring up a motion to dismiss at any time. Now, look, I, I'm highly confident he is not going to do that until after the senators have asked questions, after the first phase has ended. But it's possible, it is entirely possible, he will bring up a motion to dismiss uh, before a witness vote. And if he has 51 senators, 51 of 53, uh, that will vote to dismiss uh, this, this case, they very well may do that. I think Trump would rather have an acquittal than a dismissal. Uh, but if you can dismiss before witnesses, then you don't uh, give anyone a chance to, to vote, you know, to try to call Bolton or, or anything like that. So, again, I know we're getting in the process a little bit. We'll see how this works out. I think the real drama is going to occur probably Monday or Tuesday of next week. Uh, let's talk about the politics of this. Is this going to have any negative impact on President Trump's reelection prospects? I mean, the Dems are counting on that. I think that's really the whole reason they've gone through this charade. Um, they knew at the beginning they weren't going to ultimately get him removed from office. They knew there wasn't a two-thirds vote in the Senate. would have required 20 Republicans to join with all 47 Democrats. I mean, they, they just knew that was never going to happen, uh, particularly given the way they went about um, the impeachment process in the House, which is so one-sided and partisan and, and really farcical. So this is always about weakening him for re-election. Now, the question is whether they're succeeding. And it just looks to me like, basically, opinions about impeachment have basically broken down the way opinions about Trump have. You know, if you like Trump, you don't want to see him impeached. If you hate Trump, you want to see him impeached. I don't see that there's much evidence that people are moving in one direction or the other. I think I saw a poll yesterday that had 48% of independents supporting impeachment. You know, could be at that level, could be slightly lower than that, perhaps. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it depends. You know, look, I'm, I'm not expecting there to be a lot of new facts uh, over the next six or seven days. I'm really not. Um, and so as long if that doesn't happen, then I don't think opinions are going to change very much. Um, and so, you know, we'll see. I just think at the end of the day, impeachment's not going to matter in 2020, right? It'll be nine or ten months in the rearview mirror. We'll be focused on the contrast between the two candidates, the, you know, the direction of the country, the strength of the economy, what you know, opinions about Trump, all those things. It's not going. I don't think the election is going to be about impeachment. Uh, let's see, Matt. Uh, this morning it came out that Hillary Clinton has been uh, uh, pretty harsh. Has some pretty harsh words about Bernie Sanders. You know, Matt, when when I look at this, uh, it it seems like a, a repeat of 2016. The Democrat establishment really going all out to stop Bernie Sanders. They are, uh, and that's going to ramp up. Uh, very much. You're starting to see that over the last week or so. It's going gonna, it's gonna to really, I think, ramp up even more uh, over the next, uh, you know, 10 days or so. They, look, if he wins Iowa, he may all be unstoppable. He, you know, they may, he may also then win New Hampshire. And with labor union support, he could win Nevada. He could win the first three contests. If that's true, I don't care who, who's involved. They're not going to be able to deny him the nomination. I think there's going to be, a, you know, a reckoning. Um, you know, I want to make sure you have your feigning couch nearby, uh, Chad. Look, I actually agree with what Hillary said about Bernie Sanders, that no one likes him, that he's never accomplished anything in the Senate. No one wants to work with him. It's exactly the experience that I had working in the U.S. Senate from 2005 to 2009 when I was a senior staffer uh, as a press secretary. I mean, Bernie Sanders is a non-entity in the Senate. He always has been. Um, I think he's passed three pieces of legislation in his entire 30-year career. I think two of them are post offices. I forget what the third is. might have been a veterans thing. So he, he's been a total non-factor uh, in the Senate. I, I, remain, I, I do not understand why no one is bringing that up. I guess I'm glad Hillary is now, because it ought to be part of, part of his record, part of, part of the examination that voters have uh, of the candidates. You know, he's, he's got a clear message. He, he's created enthusiasm on the left. Um, he's consistent on his positions. Uh, he's run a positive campaign. He deserves credit for all those things. But uh, and he's unabashedly, you know, socialist basically, uh, and he deserves credit for that honesty. But I mean, you know, never accomplishing anything legislatively in 30 years in the Senate has to be part of his record. And if it took Hillary Clinton saying what needed to be said, I think that's a positive thing. Matt, uh, tell folks uh, about your newsletter that gets uh, sent out every morning, and also about your podcast. 
Yeah, the newsletter is called Must Read Texas. We take all the top stories from around the state, put it in one clean, easy-to-read email, and deliver it usually by 9 a.m. every weekday morning to more than 3,000 Texans, including your uh, host, uh, Chad. Uh, so you can check that out at mustreadtexas.com. Sign up for a free one-week trial if you like. The podcast is called Mac on Politics. It's available on iTunes, on Google Play, on Stitcher, and on Spotify. Most recent episode is with Peter Bergen, uh, author of the new book, Trump and His Generals, CNN national security analyst, and a really, really, really smart guy. So check that out. Very good. Uh, Matt, as always, appreciate your time, and uh, we'll visit with you next week. Thanks, Chad. Take care. That's Matt McCovey, Act Republican strategist here on the Chad Easty Show. News Talk, KFYF.